Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warships Blitz with Terry. The footage for this video has actually been laying around for quite a while, uh, before the 7.1 update even, and just hadn't gotten around to recording the review for it. But this is the Tier 8 British Tech Tree Battlecruiser, the Hawk. Now what's the difference between a battlecruiser and a battleship? Well, it depends a little bit who you ask, but uh, it's mainly been a uh, second, first World War 1920s topic, really, uh, because uh, mainly the British and the Germans had battlecruisers as sort of light, more lightly armored uh, scout battleships. So something that was significantly larger than an actual cruiser and had um, a decent amount of firepower, but also had speed to compensate for the relative lack of armor compared to the ships of the line that the normal, normal battleships would be employed as. Which of course uh, meant that during the, uh, the famous Battle of Jutland, uh, they used the battle cruisers in the line anyway, and were then uh, were then apparently surprised when they all blew up catastrophically because, well, lack of armor. Anyway, uh, the whole topic of battle cruisers after the First World War um, sort of was a hot issue. Was it still a hot issue until the Washington Naval Treaty? At which point, the British, who were the main proponents proponents of the whole idea, uh, were basically not having money to build anything of substance anymore anyway, the Americans had to give up on the idea of the Lexington and turned it, uh, turned it into an aircraft carrier, and uh, the Germans had other problems So <laughs> after Versailles. So uh, yeah, that, that was pretty much the end of it. That doesn't mean that the British didn't have a decent amount of uh, blueprints around and ideas and general thoughts and proposals for battle cruisers. And this specific one here, if we are looking at the details, um, it uh, does say it is a battle cruiser with nine 406 millimeter guns. But the uh, if you're looking up, I think the uh, the PC wiki, you you find out that it is meant to be the K3 design. Uh, at least from the layout, it's matching because it's a very conventional uh, layout with uh, two turrets forward, one turret aft. But uh, the K3s were supposed to have 18-inch guns of 457 millimeters. Uh, but uh, none of these designs were actually implemented, and as such, it doesn't really matter all that much. Now, however, if we compare the Hawk to uh, the Monarch, then uh, we should get some idea of uh, what the main differences are here. Well, first things first, uh, obviously, as a battle cruiser, it's all about speed, and so that's why we have the engine boost. Plus, the Hawk gets a defensive AA, whereas the Monarch has the rapid reload. Uh, she's getting more hit points than the Monarch, and honestly, the armor, while it we can't really tell uh, what the actual armor values are, but on paper, it doesn't look all that terrible at least not that much worse than what the Monarch has, because the British battleships in-game do suffer from an unfortunate uh, lack of, uh, of, in, of impactful armor plating in-game. Uh, the Hawk is reasonably quick, a bit faster than the Monarch, and uh, pretty good on the engines, but not the most maneuverable. The guns is where it gets interesting, because these are 406 millimeter guns, whereas the Monarch is running still the 15 inch 381 millimeter guns. But that's not the only difference. Uh, the Monarch, as a British battleship, obviously has very, very good high explosive shells. The battle cruiser line is more of an armor piercing line, really, than high explosive. It doesn't mean the high explosive is necessarily bad. But the AP is the one that really shines, and uh, we have, uh, as such, lower damage on the HE and uh, more alpha damage on the armor piercing, plus a relatively good turret traverse. She also gets uh, larger secondaries, which uh, manifests itself in a somewhat better range, but it's still, this is no German battleship, it is a battle cruiser, and it's also not a German battle cruiser. Uh, she does get uh, a bunch of auto secondaries with very short range, which are mostly inconsequential. But the interesting bit that everybody appears to be forgetting about is that these things get torpedoes. And while they don't get an awful lot of them, these are the hypothetical underwater launched single tube torpedoes. Uh, she does get four singles, two per side. They tend to have extremely good angles and uh, they have a relatively decent range with 7.2 kilometers. The AA is, at least in, in, its, in its normal form, significantly worse than the Monarchs, 
But uh, we do get the defensive AA to double those values. So with the defensive AA up, she definitely can pack a punch, but with a very short range on the uh, small caliber, she's not going to be more doing more than shooting a couple planes down after they've been already dropped their load. So don't think you'll be in an AA, AA ship per se. The other thing that's quite good about them is the concealment. So the Hawk comes in with a 9.6 kilometer concealment, which means that uh, together with the relative lack of armor, uh, you're often incentivized to play for concealment and build for concealment as well. Of course, the one thing that the Hawk has going for her is uh, that she leads up to the St. Vincent, which, uh, un unlike the Conqueror, is an absolutely excellent tier 10 ship and very much worth grinding for. But tier 8 is where it tends to get a little uh, time and resource in, uh, in, uh, in uh, invest investing that you need to get there and uh, that means we'll need to take a closer look. You can improve the torpedo damage reduction but you really honestly you shouldn't. Uh, instead you should be taking the elite gun operator for faster reload and better main battery traverse. There are two camouflages. Uh, there is the historical camo which uh, instead of the uh, instead of the standard battleship historical camo of main battery dispersion gives us a secondary battery range. Um, honestly, I probably would have preferred main battery dispersion here because uh, while it's nice to have range on the secondaries, the secondaries aren't that outstanding and uh, battle cruisers tend... Um, well, you play them aggressively, but that doesn't mean that you always play them in secondary range. Anyway, it is what we get. Uh, and we get torpedo range, which is also nice. Alternatively, you can get the uh, industrial camo which, as alternate camos goes, uh, does look a little bit steampunky with that with that gas light on front. But other than that, the uh, the, the stats I would personally or actually say are better. Now I would have I would have taken concealment over max traverse speed here, but uh, getting a better dispersion and range is uh, kind of what I would prefer on the ship. And regardless, I will be sailing with the historical camo because it is a matter of principle. <laughs> um. You can take the main battery mod 3, and uh, I, I tend to do that. You could be tempted to just go more for the reload, or even uh, to do something about secondary reload, given that the historical camo gives you secondary range, or even go for uh, secondary and uh, AA range. But uh, I find that mostly the fun with the British battle cruisers is to get into the occasional brawl, but mostly play them at mid-range to longer ranges with the extremely hard-hitting armor-piercing main guns and the long-range torpedoes. So uh, I'm going main battery mod 3, but all of these are valid choices. Second slot, uh, obviously propulsion, and third slot is uh, taken on concealment. Now given the relatively poor radar responsibility, uh, responsiveness, not responsibility, uh, you could be tempted to take the steering gear mod. I personally prefer concealment on the British battle cruisers because you don't want to be spotted early and you have a relatively good base concealment allowing you to uh, you know, stay undetected for quite a bit longer than you otherwise would be. And the concealment module helps with that. So with all of that set up, we are, uh, we are getting... Uh, we are getting uh, just under 21 second base reload, no rapid reload, obviously. We got the secondaries up to a range of 6.5 kilometers and the torpedoes up to uh, up to 7.5. And, and uh, we have the surface detection down to 8.6. So not quite stealth torpedo on this one, but they tend to come as a nasty surprise to anybody who's trying to rush one of these things. Now I have played... Um, I have played uh, two rounds, and I would have used uh, I would have used Tovi. There he is. So let's re uh, let's reassign him there. And uh, the one thing that's important about the uh, I have played him on something else, uh, obviously. So uh, we're going to have to redo this. <laughs> that's what I get for for leaving the for leaving the footage around for so long. I think I've used him on. Uh, uh, on the premium cruiser, what was it called? Hampshire. So we're going to have to redo that. But uh, slot one, we will take the underwater protection. Now we'll have it, and this, you, get, you get to see that for a change, how, how I'm deciding on my commander build. So let's have a quick look at the end of the line, the St. Vincent. We have three def AAs, that's kind of enough. So we, don't, we probably don't need an extra one. And we don't get any sonar. So uh, in that case, we can 
we can take the torpedo alert, which is probably not a terrible idea, which gives you 15% torpedo detection, but we do want the def AA skill and artillery maintenance. Now, battleshi uh, battleships uh, or battle cruisers, I tend to uh, I tend to use the survivalist skill because they are HP tanks. They don't have the greatest armor, but they can heal back a lot. And we get the fully prepared for that. Uh, we are going with exploit weakness and extinguisher. These are no-brainers because extinguisher really helps with reducing the fire damage on ships that don't have a high um, fire flooding reduction at the base. And for the same reason, we also go in compartment maintenance, which we can do here because uh, we don't need the master reloader from the battleship side because we don't get those. Now, uh, there's a bit of a choice here. We could use the engine overload. Uh, we could actually use all three. We could use close quarters combat or we could use the demo expert. And uh, if I wasn't using Tovi, I would probably be taking, be taking the engine overload. But because it's Tovi, I'm going to go with the demo expert because it's one of his legendary skills epic skills rather and the APCS plus and then you have a choice here I generally tend not to take citadel strike because the actual number of, of or points of damage you're doing extra isn't that large uh, given this small number of torpedoes giant hunter is probably not worth it either so I'm going to buff the and the deck plating slightly now there, there are other command uh, there are other commanders we can use here um, specifically uh, we're here at I think Nelson was uh, was predestined for for the battle cruisers, sort of. Yes. So, uh, well, yes and no. Um, he has the survivalist plus, which uh, which really stacks nicely with the British battle cruisers HP tank system. He also has the battle signals, which uh, gives you a which is sort of an improved um, an improved artillery maintenance. Uh, but what he doesn't get is the APCS skill, which is quite uh, irritating. The Adrenaline Rush is nice, but at the same time you'll be sacrificing Extinguisher, which especially for a ship that can uh, or is thinking of taking on uh, taking on airplanes or might have to operate separated from, from support cruisers for a bit at times. Uh, I really want the Extinguisher skill. So, meh, I'm not particularly feeling it. But, uh, well, there are a couple more options that you have, but that's that's one reason... Uh, do we have someone else? We still have Jellico from the legendary set, but uh, he also does not have really the right uh, the right kind of uh, kind of things. Uh, there's no perfect fit, but I think I feel in general Tovi is a nice fit with the because he's the only commander in the British set that has the armor piercing uh, capped plus shell. So you can decide if if you want the demo expert or if you're more after the engine overload. Anyway, so first battle regular, second battle with uh, with the premium heals, and uh, that's that's where uh, uh, that, that's where you know the HP tanking with the relatively large amount of hit points comes in. In the first battle, and uh, yes, this is pre seven point one uh, pre seven point one update footage. So in the first battle, we are bottom tier base capture on encounter against uh, Iowa, Atlantico, Roma, Gascoigne, Cleveland, and two destroyers, Nostogridland and Evittorio Cuniberti. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that unlike the tier 9 and 10, the Hawk actually does not get the super heal. So starting at tier 9, you are getting only two heals, but in return you get uh, significantly more hit points uh, restored. So this is still, this is still the normal... Uh, the normal kind of ship here, where you have uh, three, uh, three, three heals or three, three repair kits. And as you can see, the torpedo angles are actually better than on some Japanese cruisers. So, <laughs> definitely fun. Uh, that said, you normally don't want to just rush ahead outside. I've got a Flandre with me, which is also a bit more of a sort of battle cruisery thing, as far as I remember. I haven't looked at that thing in years. Uh, and uh, we've got an Östergötland who is going to scout. Östergötland should have radar, I think. They should have radar at this tier. So with the engine boost up, we're doing a comfortable 35 knots almost, which uh, allows us to uh, to follow along with that uh, destroyer, which of course the Östergötland takes as um, uh, takes as a, as his cue to completely abandon the scout the scout for us and uh, bugger off into the center which, uh, yeah, is, uh, is less than helpful. But I'm not spotted, which means none of the destroyers is out here on the flank just yet. 
Uh, because otherwise I would have been spotted already at this point if there was anyone coming around the flank. So we are reasonably safe, uh, on, so far at least, on this flank, unless there's a destroyer sneaking and staying st staying outside our uh, our spotting range, but that'd be very un unlikely because at that point uh, he'd be almost back at his own capture circle. So uh, there's a Roma. He's of, of course, he's outside my torpedo range and he's still behind the island. So we'll start out with the Cleveland. Nah. Cleveland is turning away and has gone undetected. Um, is Roma coming around the corner? He's running into Östergötland, Flandre and myself. Well, since there's nobody on this flank, huh, let's go around. And hello, Mr. Roma. Surprise. <laughs> and there is the enemy Östergötland as well. So he has been around, but he's been he's been lurking behind the island. That's where we can use our secondaries. Uh, probably not going to run into my torpedoes, but... He is stopping to try and avoid the friendly Östergötland's torpedoes, getting his own torpedoes away in the process. And uh, here is where the armor piercing definitely overpenetrates. So what I should have done here is switch to a high explosive. But uh, I did not expect the Östergötland to be this suicidal. So uh, instead we'll try to torpedo him then. <laughs> but uh, there's also the uh, Vittorio Cuniberti. So both destroyers have decided to sit back at home. And here I really would like have ha would, would have liked to have the, uh, the high explosive loaded because Östergötland is going to have torpedoes away. But he is within secondary range and maybe I can make something happen with my torpedoes. But I think he's, he's going to be able to avoid those without too much trouble. And yeah, the armor piercing isn't going to do anything at this range uh, against destroyers, obviously. So a high explosive would have been a better cho choice had I known that I was going to get myself into a brawl with two destroyers. But uh, anyway, back to the game. We've gotten back into position. And ooh, these torpedoes I did not see coming. These would be... Um, this should be Oyster Goodland torpedoes, but they're hitting a bit hard for Oyster Goodland. Maybe that was the Cuniberti, actually. And was he already reloaded? Um, Anyway, well, it's back to business. Uh, we've used our first heal and we'll be... No one's been killed so far. It's been a typical Asian server battle. Uh, we'll, we'll still be uh, opening up a Droma. There's Cleveland. But uh, our destroyer is keeping a, keeping a distance and Flandre has got broadside shots on him. So I'm going to keep uh, firing at the Roma, trying to finish that thing off. Uh, it's Cleveland getting away. Roma is backing off definitely, but I'm coming under fire from multiple targets here, so I am definitely backing off uh, that Iowa is shooting at me as well. Okay, Roma has gone, gone behind the island. Cleveland is uh, is uh, still duking it, it out with the Flandre and the Östergötland. Let's try to free up the Östergötland on the right flank and see if he can break through, if I can actually hit the Cleveland. And I appear to have missed him because, again, he has turned up. Oh, there's the Cuniberti again. So I've just been in reverse, going forward now. I should be relatively safe from Cuniberti torpedoes. And uh, in that case, uh, we'll, we'll do something about that Iowa over here and uh, help uh, help out in the middle. So let's get the engine, let's get the engine boost up and uh, see if we can distract some people here. And there come, uh, this must be Mr. Goodland torpedoes. Yep, I didn't see him, no chance to avoid those. Uh, no flood, so that could have been worked up. There is the flood. Um, and shot my rudder off, so we need to use the repair, which means Östergötland is now obviously going for uh, going for the uh, perma floods. But uh, the enemy team is playing extremely defensive, and since no one's pushing on our team on the right flank either, uh, like I said, typical Asian server battle, everybody's camping. Uh, sorry, no offense. <laughs> It's just just speaking the truth here. Uh, it's all about the angles. Um, let's let's call it playing cautiously. Uh, it's it's all about the angles. But we've got a good uh, a good crossfire going at this point. Uh, Flandre and, and um, our friendly destroyer are are keeping the cap circle under wraps. Somebody is perma flooding the the Atlantico. Well, very well done. This is how you deal with an Atlantico damage over time. And we'll try to finish off the uh, we'll try to finish off the Iowa first because uh, honestly the Atlantico has gone undetected. That's how far away he is from everyone. Uh, there is the Cleveland on the right, and uh, Monarch has taken down the Iowa. Cleveland, uh, and that's the that's the second battleship down on the enemy team. Cleveland is setting a fire, but at this point he's a little late to the party. At this point, I have uh, I, I have my damage control ready in case he's got another he's get, getting another fire off. That Roma I was uh, fighting with earlier is still there. Oh, there is the Atlantico. We found him again. But uh, I've got another heal coming off uh, coming off cooldown. The Cleveland should be relatively dead. 
So let's just finish that thing off. And then, um, uh, where did these torpedoes come from? I, I am a torpedo, that must have been the Oster Goodland. I'm a torpedo magnet this game by the looks of it. I don't even, I haven't even seen the destroyers. Uh, I think the Kuniberti is there on the on the right flank. And Roma has taken, yep, that was the Oster Goodland. Roma has taken out the Flandre. We'll delete the Atlantico because um, uh, it's an Atlantico, it needs to go. And uh, I've burned through all three all three heels, but um, I'm happy with the outcome. Uh, Kuniberti has run down the friendly Oster Goodland. He's way too far away from uh, from the capture circle at this point, and it's 20 seconds left. So unless uh, they manage to pull two kills back in a really short time, uh, let's distract uh, the Roma a little bit and just farm a little bit more damage. But uh, I don't really need to uh, give broadside to anyone. There's the two destroyers left who haven't really gotten anywhere this game. And uh, it worked out in the end. So even though you're just in a battle cruiser, and uh, if you happen to be on a certain server that tends to play, let's say, it a little bit more defensively, uh, you can still play quite, you can still be quite aggressive, but you kind of need to know what you're getting yourself into. So uh, choose your targets and avoid getting focus fired. And if you get focused, then uh, disengage. But uh, you're still pretty dangerous against most things. And uh, the torpedoes, even though I haven't really managed to land any, are quite fun. The second round is a carrier battle, and this time around we have uh, we have the uh, Epic Commander with APCS Plus and all the other nice things. We do, however, have two renowned 44s on our team, um, which uh, I don't know if there was a loan event or anything going on, but uh, I've seen them quite a bit recently, and always without camo, which usually tells me it's a loan event. Uh, August von Parzival, Kansas, Amagi, Sinop, a Tone, uh, and an Akatsuki, and we're playing Domination on a Deadlock. I think Deadlock is one of the newer maps. But yeah, a a a AA, so you, you can. We don't have destroyers of our own, which uh, means cap control is going to be fun. Um, AA is... Uh, no, actually, this is not a newer map. This isn't... What am I talking about? This is one of the older ones. I know this map. <laughs> I know this. This is a Unix system. <laughs> uh, anyway, we do have uh, no destroyers on our team. So that bot Miyoko is... Well, we'll see where he's heading. But um, Augs von Parzival is coming down in uh, this direction. And uh, I would assume that he's going to go for the bot rather than for me. But ov obviously I'm going to be fighter scouted, which is unfortunate because that means that if there is a destroyer out there, he knows where I am. And of course, the rest of the team knows where I am as well. So and let's engine boost up and get ourselves into the capture circle. Yep, August von Parzival is, uh, is dropping the Miyoko. So I'm just shooting a couple of planes down here uh, on, on the way up. Uh, make that one plane. And there is the enemy Synop. Hello, Mr. Synop. Uh, there is the there's the dive bomber drop. But uh, I don't have time to play with you, Synop. I have a Tone and an Amagi to deal with. Okay, Tone at this range, that means there's torpedoes in the water. Um, so we do have to be a little careful. So let's, uh, let's slow down and uh, see that we can... Although that Tone hasn't used his hasn't used his scout planes, maybe he doesn't know how to Tone. Anyway, we'll, um, we'll drop some torpedoes in case he's sailing in a straight line, which he doesn't look like he's doing. But uh, uh, there come the Tone torpedoes. Okay, he does know how to Tone. <laughs> but there's also Namagi, which is uh, sort of the bigger problem now, especially that the rest of my team has decided that C Cup is not quite worth going. Uh, that means I have the undivided attention of the August von Parzival and I have an Amagi. And I've just used my torpedoes to try and catch that Tone unawares. Anyway, um, Tone is, uh, has turned around, so he might have more torpedoes away. Uh, Parzival, fortunately, has not set a perma flood. And uh, we're going to start duking it out with an Amagi. Now, the Amagi does have the hit point advantage here, because I'm and I'm coming under fire from a whole from a whole group of things. What the Amagi appears to have forgotten, however, is that I have torpedoes. And uh, as such, uh, also that's an HE Amagi. So that tells you a lot. Um, <laughs> at this range, at a battle cruiser, uh, I, I, I would say thank you very much for, um, not, for not killing me. Anyhow, uh, I, I do need to be a little careful with my hit points here because, uh, but I have the next heal coming off cooldown in a second. Okay, he has switched to armor piercing and that almost cost me the ship. But almost is not quite there, and that's a dead Amagi. Oh, come on, really? Okay, that's a dead Amagi. <laughs> and uh, that just leaves the Tone. Um, I'm not sure what he had the HE loaded for. Well, there are no destroyers on our team, but uh, I'm not complaining here. 
Uh, if he had the armor piercing loaded from the beginning, I would have been very much in trouble. But this way, uh, even under air attack and uh, uh, under attack by two, sh uh, two enemy ships, I have uh, been getting out of that relatively unscathed. Well, let's say um, I do have 40 seconds to survive until my next heal comes off cooldown. Uh, and again, we'll drop some torpedoes in Tony's wake. Uh, it's, qu it's quite surprising that I will have to damage control. I don't have the hit points for it. Uh, it is relatively surprising how often uh, pl players don't know that uh, British battlecruisers have torpedoes. So there we go. Well, that's better. Broadsiding Tony sh shot one of his torpedo tubes off. Uh, 4,000 hit points remaining. Okay, he now has to dodge the torpedoes that have dropped, uh, dropped at him. So that gives me some time to get the heal back. And the Tone is now turning around. Give me broadside again. Yeah, good enough. Uh, shots out. And there come the Tone, the obvious Tone torpedoes. And now I'm going to get the last heal in. And uh, I'm just going to go bow in and chase after the chase after the Tone and try to finish him off. So uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, if you are if you're not. If you're not familiar with British battle cruisers and you're playing against them, they do have torpedoes. I mean, everybody learns after the first encounter that they do that. Like uh, the Amagi might not have noticed, but the Tone definitely has. So uh, one more salvo should be the end of the Tone. Has he reloaded his torpedoes? Though is the question. Uh, is he stuck on the island? Mm, not really. So shots a little bit lead. And come on, that's mine. Thank you. So just in case he got his torpedo tubes reloaded. I'm a turn in. I need to grab C cup anyway. How does it look like? Uh, actually, uh, we are ship ahead and two cups ahead, so it's not too terrible. But uh, there's still uh, it's still battleship on battleship over there. So I'm I'm not sure what uh, what the carriers are doing, but um, I can guarantee you that the Argus von Parzival is going to go for the friendly battleship, and the friendly carrier is has not moved up to be in a more aggressive position and uh, to uh, you know to unload more to unload more ordnance more quickly so i'm going to grab the capture circle just to be safe here because that isn't uh, that's that's still uh, that's still not won yet it depends on if the uh, friendly carrier can survive and the friendly battleship can survive i'm trying some blind shots at the august von Parzival just using the just using the visual indicators where the planes are landing, but uh, I think he's moving, so that's not going to work. And uh, they're still duking it out there, but at least uh, we're controlling the capture circle, so we're pulling ahead sufficiently in uh, sufficiently in points that I think uh, even if the Pazova can uh, can still make something happen there, and, and he's definitely moving. I'm surprised he's not spotted by the friendly battleship over there. Okay, the Renown has taken down the Kansas. Uh, but the Kansas has taken down the Renown in return, which is good uh, because that means the friendly carrier survives. And now I have no idea what uh, what this, there's a minute left, so it's entirely possible that the uh, the enemy carrier is uh, the fr the friendly carrier is not in a good shape. I don't know. I don't suspect so, but I'm gonna just try to uh, d to distract the August von Parzival as much as I can. There he is. Um, try to at least avoid some of the torpedoes. Damn on that! And oh, okay. The, Armor-piercing dive bombers have unfortunately taken me down before I could get a shot off, but uh, at least I think it's an indomitable on our side. Uh, he doesn't seem to be doing an awful lot with his fighters, that, uh, but um, yeah, it's an indomitable. But uh, August von Parzival, well played. Uh, but yeah, it's not uh, it's not going to help because uh, we've been holding the capture circles, and uh, at this point, all we needed was the indomitable, so indomitable on our side to survive. That he has managed, and uh, it's all good in the end. So, uh, Hawk compared to Monarch. Uh, Hawk's a good ship. Uh, then again, the Monarch's a decent ship as well. It's it's after the Monarch that things get quite, that things are getting quite, uh, well, difficult to work with. Uh, the guns are fun. Uh, the guns are really fun. Uh, the the dispersion is good, and uh, the torpedoes are a nasty surprise. And the ship itself, while it doesn't have a huge amount of armor has the speed to get you into and out of trouble again so uh, oftentimes you can do uh, you can just you have some really fun plays in the battle cruisers and i would say the big probably the biggest advantage of the hawk over the over the monarch is uh, that the monarch leads, leads to the conqueror and the hawk leads to, to leads to the saint vincent which is an excellent ship 
So um, yeah, that's a great ship to play. And I don't think I've ever touched a tier nine either. So I'm gonna have to pick up on that as well. And I try not to leave it for this long this time around. Anyway, that's it for me today. Thanks everybody. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.